Klusner doesn't mind. He just smashes the next one away from Kadic. Back with a square for four. That is a marvellous batting performance from the South Africans to reach the close, 386 for six. They still have four wickets in hand, and they still have Lance Klusner going strong, unbeaten with 61. What a player he is to come in at number seven, let alone uh, Sean Pollock, who's just got to the crease at number eight. Uh, Cronia scratched away, and it was really Herschel Gibbs and Daryl Cullinan who stole the show. Cullinan was uh, quite outstanding today. The England bowlers, Alan Mullally very persevering without always being as penetrating as he might have been. 31 overs, three for 72, high graft for him. Darren Goff came back onto the field straight after tea, so the injury wasn't uh, a great problem. 26 overs, 2 for 63, and uh, Andrew Caddick there, 1 for 81, a long, hard toil. Nothing seemed to go Caddick's way. Five. After a night of wild storms, the third day of the first test match here in Johannesburg dawned cloudy and humid, but with the promise of play. South African spectators arrived enthusiastic to see their team go for the kill after their dominating cricket of the first two days. The relatively few English supporters feared the worst, and the threat loomed again, of course, of Alan Donald and of Sean Pollock. The crowds here have been surprisingly small given the more than fair ticket prices, either side of a fiver for adults and just £1.20 for children. After Donald on the first day and Daryl Cullinan on the second, could an Englishman emerge as a hero on the third? Yes, and don't England need a hero in the, the plight that they find themselves here at the Wanderers? Hello to you and uh, a warm welcome to the highlights of the third day's play. Let's have a reminder of uh, how things stood overnight. England all out for 122. In reply, South Africa 386 for six. And look at that, Lance Klusner is going strong. He's uh, unbeaten with 61. A very fine 100 from uh, Daryl Cullinan and good support from Herschel Gibbs. That was uh, an important uh, innings at the top of the list. Now then, uh, the pitch on this third morning was greener than we'd seen it at any stage in the match. Those overnight storms had clearly freshened things up, but the grass didn't seem to have been cut very low. And with the overhead conditions being so muggy, it really did look as if it would be very difficult for the batsman. We're going to pick up play now with the Darren Goff steaming in to Lance Klusner, and it's the very first ball of the day. Klusner gets it away on the onside straight away and comes back for a second that's good running oh that's a that's an extraordinary shot anyway considering it's second ball of the morning makes it even more extraordinary just leans into it slightly forward and then leans into that shot and the power from a, a short arm jab racing away and that's his 10th boundary that's straight just how much bat on it he's got I'm not sure now it's good is it gonna go for four it's a real tester yes it is that's the slowest area of the field as well that's the area that when it gets damp doesn't get the morning Sun not that there has been much this morning but uh, he's an amazing player this he really look at it it's a push that's all it is it's a forward defensive push Bowl him out. Emphatically, a little bit of in-swing, and what a sight that is for a quick bowler when the middle stump flies out of the ground. Well, Darren Goff has a wonderful change of pace to his armory, and this certainly was one which was a lot quicker. It was also very full. It wasn't a Yorker. It just came in between bat and pad. Lance Klusner doesn't traditionally move his feet much, didn't dare, and paid the price. 72 he got 398 for seven the score Catch 
edge not carrying so a shaky ish start for Mark Boucher fine bowling this is what you want to see from a test bowler new batsman in don't give him any respite look at that just on the outside edge oh a bolt beautifully bowled 399 to 7 Standing over from Darren Goff. This was the last ball. And that is in the right place and the right length. Look at that. Look at that ball move. Well, I'm sure Mark Bouch is going to find this a different proposition from that he's faced in the last two tests against Zimbabwe. Not only from the pitch, because uh, look at this type of bowling. There he goes, he's got it in the end, and he deserves it. He's just bowled exactly the right channel. He's had a little bit of help from the pitch. He swung the ball in the air, and he takes his second wicket of the morning, and justifiably so. Robbins summarised it absolutely perfectly. Look at that, he had to play it, it was on off stump, just moved sufficiently, less movement than before, but quicker, and Stewart takes an excellent rolling catch. South Africa lose their eighth wicket uh, as Swan Pollock goes for two. Oh, but he's not going to make one this time. First ball, middle stump gone. Lovely bowling from Darren Goff. And Alan Donald gets the first baller. Yes, if he misses, I'm going to hit probably the thoughts of Darren Goff there. Alan Donald didn't look quite as if he had the stomach for any sort of batting today but that's good movement through the air Donald playing down the, the long wrong line inside the, the line of the ball well the delay for uh, specks of rain and for bad light lasted an hour and ten minutes and at that point Hansi Cronier declared 403 for nine for South Africans and a really really fine innings that from Daryl Cullinan good support too from both uh, Herschel Gibbs and wondrous hitting from Lance Klusner down uh, the list there the England bowlers Darren Goff much the best of them he picked up five could easily have picked up six had uh, he been allowed to bowl to the number 11 batsman Paul Adams Andrew Caddick and Alan Mullally strong in support though in retrospect my suspicion is they will think they didn't bowl quite as straight as they could have done through uh, the important second day. A lead then of 281 for the South Africans. We're going to have a look now at how England do in their reply. Quick ball. Voucher palms it down. And Cullinan very quick to retrieve. And he's gone. He's bagged him. Norton, Norton in the test match. Second ball and first ball. So the ground on which he was the hero a few years ago has been his undoing on this occasion. Well, you won't get a better delivery first up than this one. And unlucky in a way to edge it to the keeper. Remember Darrell Cullen coming to the wicket, getting a similar ball first up, and he was fortunate to miss it. But Sean Pollock, he's the danger man. He's the one you want to avoid facing. He moves it both ways off the seam and such a difficult proposition. And uh, no one can say that uh, the technique of the man was at fault. And he walks away from this test match runless. Not for one. Pollock. Oh. Well, is this a different pitch? Well, what do you say? And uh, Pollock almost... Uh, laughs as he bowls this delivery that's gone along the ground okay what's the mindset of the batsman now other than let's have a little giggle well there are some buys against the keeper hardly his fault Donald that's off the glove and doesn't carry to Adams Butch is also shaking his head now. Well, there's a very aggressive shot. That was very well played indeed by Nasser Hussain, and he's got six for it. 
Trevor was quite rightly surprised because uh, there was no hint that he was going to show any aggression and certainly this really wasn't a bouncer it was just a short delivery fielded in the slips it didn't carry excellent stop from Jacques Callas those are really nasty ones to field never know exactly how they're going to bounce look at that actually missed him and Daryl Cullinan was the, the backstop this is four buys in fact it's going to be wides that went so high over Hussein's head and wicketkeeper Boucher that umpire Venkat has called it four wides well somehow that's poetic justice because we saw one a little earlier uh, going over M Mark Boucher's head this is in the air, but uh, there's no one there, and so they can come back for the second. They have to hurry a little bit, though, when you take on Alan Donald's arm. It may not be a full house, but it's certainly an enthusiastic one. You can see how he realizes suddenly that it's Alan Donald who's roaring around to pick it up and throw in. Well, that's four runs through the covers. So Nasser Hussain is looks as though he's quite happy to carry the attack to the South Africans now. 21 for one. Oh, and that's four lucky runs. He threw the bat at that, and it flies over the heads of that cordon of slips. And no third man, so four to butcher. Once again, they've decided that the moment the ball is in a reasonable area up to the bat, they're going to give it the full flow. Frustration for Alan Donald because uh, he did earn the edge. Nicely played by Hussain, and he might get four for it. There's a race here, and it's lost by the fielder. again Sean Pollock trying to give this one the maximum time in the air Just slightly over pitches and uh, that's Hussein very quick to capitalize on that he isn't going to see many half volleys during the course of the day bold him off stump out of the ground well that's Sean Pollock's reply to having been driven down the ground for four a magnificent delivery right through the England captain Nasser Hussain and he's been bowled for 16 31 for two well this seemed to keep a little bit low yes it did look at that it didn't bounce at all now that's a very difficult delivery to face Sean Pollock delighted but a slight shake of the head from from Nasser Hussain he has to go and the score is 31 for two Is well played by Vaughan. I think Donald was looking for the Yorker there, but it's nicely picked up by Vaughan and played away through midwicket and brings him a boundary. An extremely long run for uh, Paul Adams. He was in there at short leg, but this is nicely timed. Look at the head is steady, nice balance. Frustration for Alan Donald because it was just slightly over pitched. Big appeal, not out, says umpire Orchard. So much movement in this pitch. Well, it's extremely good umpiring. And the reason is that it was very difficult for the umpire to be certain of two things. One, the height of the ball, which we'll get a better view of from uh, this mid-wicket camera. It may have been a bit high. And two, it just nipped back and... Robin Jackman made the point about the lavish movement and when the ball nips back and it's got another yard to travel it's pretty hard to say it'll certainly hit leg stump so Dave Orchard uh, who's had a good match got that right as well end of the over 38 for two this is ridiculous absolutely ridiculous pitch isn't good enough I, I don't know that uh, I necessarily blame any groundsman I don't know enough about the history of the pitch but 
We're trying to get a display of the best cricketers in the world here in front of an audience. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, you must walk back and bowl, Lars. It's no good complaining. You've got every right to beat the bat. Oh, well, they just style a stick, or they don't. I wouldn't call that even a half chance. You either catch those or you don't. Well stopped. It's a good effort. A really good reaction effort. The ball that comes off the face of the bat is the most difficult. A, it's coming quicker, and B, invariably, it's hit on a downward spiral rather than an upward, looping upward like the one off bat and pad. That might be out. Yes, it is. I think there was a moment's hesitation from Dave Orchard in case the ball was going down the leg side. But it kept low again. Very hard to blame the batsman. Some movement into Vaughan and precious little bounce. Here we go. There's the slant into the batsman. Would this have gone on to miss leg stump or hit middle and leg? Well, you can't blame the umpire for that. I think you've got to say that middle and leg would have been hit. The batsman is right back on the crease. It's a cracking bit of bowling from Donald. It kept a bit low. Michael Vaughan is done for in the first test. Welcome back to the Wanderers. Real problems here for England. South Africa are bowling beautifully and the pitch is spiteful. 41 for three. When we left it, it is Alex Stewart who is the new batsman. Oh, snorter. And uh, he's going to jog through. And that's hit him under the arm, I fancy. And he's in pain already. What a welcome. <laughs> that is just so unpleasant to uh, get to the pitch and uh, to face that first ball. Look at, look at what happens here. He's trying to get forward and then all of a sudden, oh, up it comes. He's nicely in line and he's in pain immediately. Even Helen Donald is surprised by what happened there. Oh, diving attempt by Gibbs, but that'll go to the boundary for four. And it's in the slot for... Alex Stewart, he hardly had to move his feet there. Well, of course, uh, everyone will know that Alex Stewart does this. He gets right back to Alan Donald, trying to keep it up to the bat, but uh, Alex Stewart countering that by leaning into it so beautifully and hitting it through the covers. Oh, it's to stopped at short leg by Adams, who's really had a, a busy time there, and that's a terrific stop by Adams. No, he squeezes that away. And then they take three. Good running. Good chase from Gibbs. Oh, that's a typical Alex Stewart shot. He'll get four runs for it as well. It's always good to see a batsman showing aggression like this. It's so easy to be very timid and to uh, defend that sort of a shot. But he's back. He knows he's nicely back. Balance is good. He just rolls the wrist over it beautifully. Oh, that's hit him. There's an appeal. Well, it started behind the wicket and uh, it didn't bounce. Butcher went very, very low. One of the difficulties, look how short that is. So quite right, the batsman instinctively starts to duck, but uh, the ball just doesn't get up at all, and uh, he takes a terrible blow. Oh, he's hit that beautifully. And he's hit it so well, it's gone over the boundary for six. A smile from Alan Donald, because that ball flew straight towards the man at fine leg. Unfortunately, he wasn't 50 foot tall. Otherwise, he might have got a catch with that top edge. It really wasn't in the middle of the bat. And look there, the man is standing, staring at it, and then suddenly, oops, sorry, fetch it in about the 10th row. Great 
striking shot beautifully hit he gets in the right position and there's no need to run either for the batsman or the fielders well he's he's just really looking for the ball on the back foot isn't he and uh, unfortunately Lance Clusen is giving him too many this one he's got through it's a magnificent shot off the back foot Yes, he's so early into position. He's got plenty of time to hit this well in front of the square. And that's a copybook back foot drive. Oh, he dropped that. It was a return catch. Very difficult for a fast bowler to grasp these. And Donald got his hand there. Couldn't hold on. Down to fine leg, and Adams has to race around as well because he was in off the boundary a little bit and uh, quite a bit squarer. And he does really well to get round and uh, restrict them to two. And this has beaten mid off and his four runs. This is a good shot from Butcher because he's spent long periods scoreless. And yet he's able to capitalize on over pitch delivery from Pollock. Hits it with enough power to beat the diving Gibbs. Oh, that one beat him. Lovely bowling by Pollock. They go up for this one. And umpire Orchard says no. And I think we'll find that he might have hit his boot or something with his bat. Yes, there were definitely two noises, but whether it was the edge and then the, the ball off the pad, I think it was the bat coming through, striking the pad, and then the ball hitting the pad that fraction of a second afterwards. Good stroke from Butcher. Doesn't have to run. He knows it. A little bit full. Fraction wide, but it was really the length of the ball that gave Butcher the opportunity to put it away for four. It's beaten Boucher. Not only was it that misdirected down the leg side, but it also wasn't the uh, best of bounces either. Cullinan, the man who has to chase from slip. Well, that is a good stroke. And uh, this is one of the problems with Paul Adams, that he can't bowl six in a row on the spot. 94 for three. Big appeal, no stroke offered. Well, this as much as anything will uh, restore some of the confidence of Paul Adams. Brilliant, simply brilliant. Now, remember, Rhodes is actually at cover point. Let's see where he picks it up more behind square backward point but uh, he's coming in so fast well fantastic shot it's a superb shot this the ball was there to be hit but it still has to be done oh what a superb delivery Stewart can't believe that his stamps are still standing. Now, the thing that was tremendous about this delivery was the length. You see, we know Alex Stewart is trying to go back. And uh, this just went straight over the off stump, didn't it? Put that away nicely into the gap between the two men back. Good fielding. Has he saved it? Yes, he has. And an excellent recovery from Paul Adams. There was thought of an extra run there because uh, Gary Kirsten diving pushed it past Paul Adams, who was assisting him. Peel for LBW. No, says umpire Venkat. We'll have a look in a moment why. It's 107 for three. Not too bad a shot, you see. It pitched on line. Slashed over the slips 
for four. Well, we've seen quite a lot of aggression from Stewart in this innings. And that four brings up his 50. This is a good shot. Four runs, beats Midoff. Valiant effort from Adams, but he's not quick enough to get across to this uh, full-blooded drive from Butcher. That's over-pitched again, and this is very well played by Stewart. He got his weight up nicely and plays it through mid-wicket for four. Back pass, Cornier. A nice shot. Two people chasing it. And I don't think they'll win. No. Paul Adams gives up in the end and that was a well-timed shot down the ground to end the over 126 for three so he whips it away on the onside through mid-wicket nicely played Adams is after it from his mid-on position and uh, in vain brave dive an effort to try and stop it but he couldn't quite get there in time Heel for LBW. No, says umpire Venkat. Well, this is quite a good shout because uh, Stewart is caught on the crease. He hasn't got far forward at all. And now he lashes it through the covers. Magnificent shot. That will annoy the captain even more. Having had the LBW appeal turned down now, he's punished through the covers. He's gone for it again, it's in the air, and it's going to bounce short. And again, Alex Stewart is not pulling out of any little challenge being offered by Alan Donald here. And Sean Pollock had to make a lot of ground from deep backward square. Here it is again, he's gone for it. Pollock didn't see it, and even if he did, he had no price because it's gone through mid-wicket. Well, that is an indication that Stewart saw it so early, he knew it was coming, and it disappeared in front of Square. Well, the first one was a surprise to him. This one wasn't. It certainly wasn't the right height or the right line either, from Alan Donald's point of view. And that's gone to the boundary from Stewart. Fraction too short and too wide. From time to time, we've seen Alex Stewart's balance being a little bit off, and it wasn't perfect here, leaning away a little bit, but his timing now is really well set. That could be close, it is. Donald gets Butcher. He can't believe it. But Alan Donald has got the breakthrough and ends an obdurate innings from Butcher. And could that be the breakthrough? to herald the final onslaught yes, well it was a long innings indeed this one the question i had to ask was did it bounce or pitch outside leg stump i think mark butcher thought it did the ball would without doubt have hit the stumps but you can see he's not happy and alan donald almost surprised to be given the decision but he's got it indeed 145 for four with butcher gone for 32. Edge gone, caught behind, Boucher takes the catch. Donald gets two in the over. And Adams is out for a single. And England are in desperate straits now. It's too late now for Chris Adams. So often happens, doesn't it? New batsman at the crease, he's not used to the conditions. This one perfectly positioned by Alan Donald just leaving him slightly off the off the pitch feet nowhere and the outside edge Mark Boucher gets another one England 147 for five and that's gone between the men on the offside Donald holds his head so close to 10 but four to Flintoff Well, there he immediately starts to signal that perhaps one of those in front of the stump should be added to that cordon in the, in the gully area, because that did fly in the air. 
Oh, he's hit that in the air. Running back, Gibbs. No. And, well, we've seen some astonishing catches in the past, but uh, that one would have taken some doing. He's going to get four more, and this is over the wicket keeper's head. Oh, in fact, it came off the helmet. Well, it did him for pace. Perfectly simple. It banged into the pitch. And he's very late on it. So what does he do? He crashes it to the boundary, just backward a square on the offside. Well, he's done, he's done what I was just about... What was important is that Donald had been bowling his bouncers outside off stump because Stuart was trying to fetch them, and that's why they were going up in the air. And uh, ideally, Stuart should have been playing the cut stroke. He's caught, caught by John T. Rhodes at point. After a short one, he pitched that one up and driven straight into the hands of John T. Rhodes. He is a fantastic bowler. I'm, we're really seeing why he is a champion. Because he's such a good thinker. He knew how pumped up Stuart was. He gave him a ball to drive. And he smacked it straight at uh, the most sure bloke to catch it on the planet. Very fine innings from Alex Stewart. There's no disgrace in getting out. He played by the sword. He died by it. 86. He's gone for it. 166 for six. He's at it again. And there's another one here for him. Yes. That's number 11 in the test match. And... Well, we were talking about all the things that make him the great fast bowler, the way he thinks, but there is naked aggression there as well, and high pace. And on this occasion, that's what got him the wicket. <laughs> that's a fantastic bit of bowling. I mean, Gavin Hamilton will, will look when people just see that isolated as a bit of a but a, a sort of a rabbit performance for Gavin Hamilton. A pair on Test Match debut, that is a desperate thing. Oh, he could have been caught. It went very quickly off the bat. And uh, reflex action, Adams got his hand to it, but couldn't hold on to it. Oh, it's Gary Kirsten back in there under the helmet. Donald knew his man, didn't he? He knew he wanted to get Caddick. He wanted to pound the thing into his gloves, see if he could do damage to his fingers as well. And Gary Kirsten, it's funny that Adams isn't in there, actually. Normally, a, a short leg is a specialist fielder. And that will not have amused uh, Alan Donald at all. I bet you he's getting a little stare from Donald. <laughs> that was rather well done by Andy Caddick. His batting's improved immensely. We were having a, a little joke earlier on about it, but he's played with great certainty during the Test Series against New Zealand. He's a good hitter of the ball, actually. He times it. He just stood up straight and delivered. Oh, valiant effort from Adams at mid-off. But he's only palmed it for four. Yes, Adams has managed to get a hand on this, but it's it with such power that it's carried to the boundary. And Flintoff, well, he hits the ball as hard as Inzaman Malak. That's more like a goalkeeper than a cricketer. Back of the net, then. Smashed away through the covers by Flintoff. And the end of the over, 182 to 7. Klusner on now from the call at drive end to replace Sean Pollock. Beautifully struck away. That's a good cricket shot from Flintoff. Fairly simple technique, Andy Flintoff. If it's short, he is keen to get onto that front foot and drives very powerfully. But on, on the back foot, he's equally as powerful. And that's a good cricket shot. 
Well, the bad light came and it stayed, and play was curtailed earlier than we all would have liked. 188 for seven, England. Alex Stewart, the star of the show, 86 he made, and it was good to see him back in some sort of form. 32 to Mark Butcher, he got a rotten LBW decision, and it was good to see him also find some touch. Andrew Flintoff, unbeaten with 26. There is great flair when he is uh, attacking the ball. The South African bowlers, it's uh, the Alan Donald, Sean Pollock show in a big way. There's a real chance that they will claim all 20 in the match. They've been outstanding, and you can't praise them uh, too much higher than that. After. Pre